We got some more madness on Friday afternoon. Might as well start there. Final score, Yale 78, Auburn 76. That represents Yale's second NCAA tournament victory. It means the Ivy League has advanced in the NCAA tournament for the second straight year, and it's another disappointing loss for the SEC, which has not done so well in this NCAA tournament. Strong Jaw, you tell me, what's the story? The Ivy League advancing again, or the fourth SEC team, in this case, the SEC tournament champs, losing a round of 64 game to a double-digit seed. Yeah, shout out to Yale. It's obviously good for the Ivy League. It's good for Yale. Um, this is Yale's second ever NCAA tournament win. Of course, the first one gave us that magical moment with Tor Torian Prince. How does how does <laughs> Yale out rebound Baylor? Uh, but I think the bigger story, right, has got to be the SEC. Uh, they they fall after today's results to three and five in the round of sixty four, and uh, that is among the worst in in major conferences in this NCAA tournament. Obviously, the, the Mountain West did a little bit worse, two and three. But uh, given that Auburn was the SEC champion um, and given how much the SEC has struggled, to me, I think that is the bigger story coming out of today. And it is wild. Like, Yale is good, and it, nothing should take away from that very basic statement of fact. Yale is good. Yale played well. Yale deserved to win the game. But it is also true that Auburn had not lost a game like this all season long. What I mean by that is that Auburn was 24-0 heading into this game against teams where the opponent was um, – let me rephrase it. Auburn was 24-0 in – opportunities outside of quadrant one. So any quadrant two opportunity, any quadrant three opportunity, any quadrant four opportunity, they never lost one all season. Every loss they had was inside quadrant one. Today they're playing Yale, where Yale fell in the net rankings, made this on a neutral court, a quadrant two opportunity, and they lose it. So they're now 24 and one outside of quadrant one. And they it just got off to a bad start. It just had bad vibes the entire game. Chad Baker Mazzara gets uh, ejected three minutes in for chicken winging uh, an opposing player on the way back down the court. And I understand that, you know, there was stuff that led up to that moment, but this is the cliche of the second guy always gets caught. No matter what led up to that moment, you can't do that in that moment. It's the third leading score for Auburn. He's removed very early, and everything after that was just a fight, fight, fight. So disappointing ending to an otherwise, I think, good season for Auburn. But like you said, the SEC, um, they now have uh, five losses in this event, and four of them are to double-digit seeds. Four of them to double-digit seeds. You got number 14, Oakland. A 14 seed Oakland over Kentucky, a 13 seed in Yale over Auburn, an 11 seed in Oregon over South Carolina, and a 10 seed in Colorado over Florida. That's not the way this was supposed to go for that league. Not great. And I'm going to give a shout out here to to John Polakidis. 28 points. He was an electric factory for Yale today in that win. Uh, Bruce Pearl after the game. You know, I think he handled it with grace. Obviously, it's not great. You're a your top seeded team, you're losing to a Yale team that you were heavily favored over. But uh, he basically said, like, yeah, Yale was the better team. Like, we we had a plan that we thought would work. It didn't work. Uh, they shot it well. They played defense well. And uh, it was it was an impressive victory, I thought, for Yale. And, and, and credit to them and how they pre prepared for this game today. So now on Sunday in the East region, we're going to have a 13th seeded Yale against a fifth seeded San Diego State. And that's because San Diego State did win its round of 64 games, 69 65 over UAB. That was closer than I think maybe some of us thought it would be. Jaden Ledee was terrific. He took 18 shots, made 11 of them, 32 points, eight rebounds. The Aztecs are now just one win away from their second straight appearance in the Sweet 16. And uh, I don't mean to say it this way. Because, again, Yale is good, but anytime you have to play a double-digit seed to get to the Sweet 16, you are in an advantageous situation. Um, and, and so San Diego State finds itself in a, in a position where, um, you know, they'll, they'll be favored in this game for a reason. And they've got a, an opportunity. This doesn't happen too many times outside of the traditional power structure, Gonzaga, of course, notwithstanding, when you can get back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances. But San Diego State is is one more victory away from doing that. Yeah, and it, and it looked there for a little bit like two of the four final team, 
Final Four teams from last year uh, were potentially on the brink of, of getting eliminated. But Jaden Ledee was awesome in this game, uh, 32 points. San Diego State uh, ends up squeaking this one out over UAB, um, sets up a really interesting matchup, obviously. Good chance to make it back to the Sweet 16 now. Let's stay in the East region where Northwestern and Florida State actually got – uh, the day started. That was on CBS, America's Most Watched Network, Network of Stars. Final score, Northwestern 77, FAU 65 in overtime. Your rare 12-point win in overtime. Ryan Langmore took over in OT, scored the first seven points for Northwestern, finished with 27. Let's stop here for a second because – uh, obviously, Northwestern is going to go on to play UConn. UConn blew out stats in 91-52. Huskies were up 33 at the half, cruised to a 39-point uh, a, a, a win. All five starters scored at least 12 points. So we get UConn and Northwestern on Sunday. Let's stop here and focus on FAU. Yeah. Um, a lot of attention on the final possession of regulation. Um, Northwestern goes down, ties it, and then Janelle Davis gets the ball, and there's – there's time on the clock and he's coming up to court and he's just, he either lost track of time and I want to ask, or he thought he was Damian Lillard. What happened? Did Janelle Davis for a brief moment think he was Damian Lillard? Cause even Raff, Bill Rafferty, the legend speaks for all of us. He said, what's he doing as he was just sort of, he just sort of decided he's going to pull from wherever at some point missed it badly. I think it got blocked and then they go to overtime and they just got blown out. Obviously he would, that, that's going to, that'll weigh on him for like, He'll watch. He'll have that in his head forever. He'll wish that he would have handled that final possession a little differently. What do you think happened there? Yeah, I honestly just assumed that the clock on my television had broken because yeah. the time is running out, and it's like, you know, he's just taking a, a Sunday stroll up the up the floor. Um, no urgency whatsoever. Uh, Dusty May was actually asked about it after the game. Said, uh, I think he put it politely. It, it wasn't the look that they wanted, uh, which, like, of course, duh. You don't want right. to settle for. Um, a buzzer beating heave uh, to to end up going to overtime, they end up losing the game. So, yeah, I, I think he honestly just lost lost track of the situation, lost track of how much time was on the clock. It happens. It doesn't happen very often, um, and especially in an NCAA tournament game with this, these types of stakes. Uh, but it happened against uh, Northwestern, and Northwestern obviously huge in, in the second in the second half and in overtime. Uh, Langboard. 27 points, 25 of his points came in second half in overtime. Uh, Boo Booey was fantastic. I uh, really like this Northwestern team. Made a lot of shots in the second half in overtime. All right, Strong Jaw. I guess let's just go ahead and do this now. FAU season is over. Where yeah. do you think Dusty May is coaching next season? Louisville, Michigan, Vanderbilt, FAU, somewhere else? Where's Dusty May at on opening day next season? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it would it would have to be Louisville would be my uh, – would my be my leader in the clubhouse for right now? Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Louisville's moving on from Kenny Payne. Uh, there's been some connection there, obviously. Dusty May is going to end up being one of the hottest head coaching candidates this carousel season. So, uh, I would think Louisville. Uh, do you think there's another contender maybe lurking out there, like a Michigan or? Uh, even at Kentucky, that seems kind of wild to think well, about. But. Well, like obviously with what happened on Thursday night, the Kentucky situation is at least theoretically up in the air. It might not actually be up in the air, but the fan base is done. Um, it's it's not in a good place. I, I could make a convincing argument that it's in Kentucky and John Calipari's best interest to separate. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they will. But that is another factor in all of this. Like if you are Dusty May or Dusty May's representation, do you really want to take a different job right now if you think Kentucky might open in three days? Yeah. You know, and so these are the types famously you'll remember like Chris Beard took the UNLV job because he thought it was the best job he could get at the time. Yeah. And then like very shortly after that, Josh Pastor takes Georgia Tech. Leaves Memphis open. Tubby Smith takes Memphis. Texas Tech's now open. And Chris Beard's like, whoa, I didn't even know that would be open. Or else I wouldn't have taken this stupid job. Not that the UNLV job's stupid, but you get the point. So he's like, okay, well, I guess I got to go to Texas Tech now. So if you're Dusty May, you want to like be – you need to have a good understanding of, okay, what's open now, which is obvious. We can all figure out what's open now. You just got to Google it, right? Um, but, but like what is going to open? What else could open? And if you think that Kentucky could open and you think – 
that's the job you'd rather have and you think you're a real candidate for it, then it complicates the whole situation. But if we were just handicapping it right now, I, I think most people would put Louisville as mm -hmm. the favorite. Of all the jobs on the board right now, it's the best job. There are other good jobs. Michigan's a good job. Vanderbilt is, I know it's been bad, but like there are some things that make that a good job, like a private school, an unbelievable city to live in. Um, you know, there are things that make that at least interesting to a certain type of candidate, but ultimately Louisville's the biggest job open right now. Um, if we were just handicapping it, I would make Louisville the favorite, but as always, we'll see.